Welcome to the IUPUI School of Science Earth Sciences JAG Day. We're excited to have you here to learn more about what it'll be like to study environmental science and geology at IUPUI. My name is Lori Hart, and I am the Associate Director of Undergraduate Enrollment for the School of Science. My contact information is on your screen, and I want to encourage you to contact me with any questions you have about the School of Science, from visiting to applying to accepting your offer of admission. The School of Science grants Purdue University degrees in eight of our academic departments. However, in Earth Science programs, we grant Indiana University degrees. You'll be studying in our four science buildings on campus, including our brand new Innovation Hall, which boasts many new state-of-the-art science labs and classrooms, including organic chemistry, biology, and geology. We have nine science academic programs, biology, chemistry, computer science, earth sciences, forensics, math, neuroscience, physics, and psychology. And our students are involved in over 500 campus organizations and over 30 clubs and interest groups, such as Earth Sciences Club, and you'll be encouraged to join any of our science organizations, no matter what your major. If you enjoy hiking and caving or want to get to know other students within your major, you'll want to join the Earth Sciences Club. Or if you'd rather help plan a murder mystery dinner, then Forensics Club might be something you're interested in. In Computer Science Club, you can help design and program a gaming cabinet or help care for plants in our greenhouse through, our, through Biology Club. There's truly something for everyone. And the School of Science is invested in your success, providing free tutoring from experienced tutors in select science courses in biology, chemistry, computer science, math, physics, and psychology to supplement your course content. And we understand that you have many options where you can study science, but I wanna share advantages to studying science at IUPUI. First of all, we're a school of science as opposed to a school of arts and sciences, which allows us to focus all of our time and resources on our passion of science. Furthermore, our pre-professional and career advising office called Science Preps focuses only on science and has created relationships with the employers that hire and the graduate and professional schools that admit our students. They will provide you help with, with expert help in resume writing, internship and full-time employment searches and professional school preparation and applications. Next, our location in downtown Indianapolis provides you with many advantages. Living and learning in downtown Indy is fun. We have the Indianapolis Zoo, museums, the Indiana Repertory Theater, the Indianapolis Colts, the mall, and many great restaurants all within walking distance of our campus. And even more importantly, nearby, we have many companies such as Eli Lilly and Salesforce and city, county, and state agencies who hire our students for internships and provide job shadowing opportunities. We also have five hospitals that are on or adjacent to our campus as are the IU Schools of Medicine, Dentistry, and Law, providing you access to amazing volunteer shadowing and research opportunities. Now, while here, you'll be immersed in a close-knit science community. You'll find academically focused science students who enter IUPUI with GPAs and test scores above the IUPUI average. You'll find your people here in study groups, student organizations, and in the many social opportunities available to you. This year, U.S. News & World Report named IUPUI number 49 in the nation for commitment to undergraduate teaching. Our faculty is committed to undergraduate education. The majority of your classes will be taught by full-time faculty and you'll find our professors to be approachable and accessible with weekly office hours. And last, you'll find amazing opportunities within science to get involved in research as early as your freshman year and see the real world contribution of what you're learning in the classroom. You can get involved by reaching out to professors in science whose research interests you, which is all found on our website, and you can just ask them how you can get involved. Many of the opportunities are paid or can be completed for credit. Now at IUPUI, you have endless options available to you. You can choose a living situation that is best for you on campus, a nearby apartment, or commuting from home. If you are an admitted student who's interested in living in one of our four residence halls, I encourage you to apply today as rooms are still available. However, we are filling fast now that it's been announced that IUPUI classes will be returning to on campus in the fall. Housing contracts will be sent out beginning April 1st to your IUPUI email account. They're always sent on Thursdays from April through June in the order that the applications were received. So if you have applied for housing, you'll wanna start checking your IUPUI email account every Thursday to see if your contract has arrived. Because once it has arrived, you only have until the following Monday to accept. Now, if you're interested in living with other science students who are taking the same classes as you, you can sign up to live on the STEM floor in North Hall. 
You'll find it under residence-based learning communities in your housing application. And if you've already applied for housing, you can still go in and update that preference and it will not affect your application date. And then of course at IUPUI, you'll have the opportunity to take classes from both IU and Purdue programs. And if you wanted to learn about more about housing, you can follow that email address that, or sorry, that uh, website address on the bottom of the screen, housing.iupui.edu. Now I invite you to visit us and take a student-led tour of the School of Science and see where you'll be studying. We offer in-person tours every Thursday and Friday this spring. You can tour science alone or pair it with an IUPUI campus tour. We have had a JAG day like this for all nine of our academic units. Today is our last one. However, we are posting recordings of each of our JAG days on our science visit page and on our IUPUI student YouTube channel. So if you've missed one, uh, definitely uh, check those out and, and watch them. Information on all of our science visits can also be found at science.iupui.edu slash visit, or you can email me at science at iupui.edu with any questions you have. You'll also want to follow at IUPUI Science on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and learn more about our students and faculty, as well as the exciting opportunities available to you in science. Now in a few minutes, we'll have Earth Sciences students, Brady and Caitlin, here to answer any questions you have about our geology and environmental science programs. So stay tuned after our department presentation to hear from them. I wanna remind you that you can ask any questions you have for me or for our faculty or student panels by clicking on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We do wanna answer your questions, so please ask away. Now I'm pleased to introduce Earth Sciences professors, Dr. Cam Macris and academic advisor and senior lecturer, uh, Jenny Nelson, to speak to you more about the curriculum, resources, and research of the Earth Sciences Department at IUPUI. So welcome, Dr. Macris and Jenny. I'll turn it over to you now. Welcome, everyone. I'm Jenny Nelson. I am an academic advisor in the Department of Earth Sciences. Not in, I am the academic advisor in the Department of Earth Sciences. And I am also a senior lecturer, meaning that I teach a number of our courses, um, especially at the 100 and 200 level. So as an IUPUI student in the Earth Sciences, you'll see me both as an advisor and as an instructor. So I wanted to talk to you today a little bit more about our program and about Earth Sciences. So Earth Science is relevant and important in today's society. Um, you can think of many things that you've heard about in the news recently, and those things can relate right back to earth sciences and earth science knowledge and earth scientists. Um, if you look at the left on this slide, you'll see just a few pictures that represent earth processes and things that are related to earth sciences. Um, recently, volcanoes, <clears throat> a volcano is erupting in Iceland. Um, we, we mine the earth for minerals. We've heard of hurricanes. Um, solar energy, renewable energy, oil and gas, fossil fuels, flooding, droughts, fires, water quality, all of these things have ties back to the earth sciences. And so what you're going to find about earth science is that it's multidisciplinary, meaning that it involves many of our science programs at IUPUI, and it involves many sciences. You'll learn about physics and biology and chemistry, um, you'll work with people in sustainability to learn about many different scientific, pro scientific concepts, but also about earth processes and try to understand these. And the role of an earth scientist in society is to help solve problems, help learn more about the earth around us, help learn more about problems that we may be facing and use our knowledge to solve those and to move society forward and keep society safe. So on the right side of this slide, you have a figure from the American Geosciences Institute. And I love this figure because it shows you the multiple opportunities for an earth scientist after, after graduation, whether that's with a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or a PhD. Some, you can see as you look around this wheel, you'll see that some earth scientists go into law business, policy, um, education, writing, medicine, art, engineering. And a lot of them also go into science, into um, studying very specific earth processes. Our graduates also go into a variety of careers, nonprofit, academia, the gov uh, government 
types of positions, both at the state and national level, industry and research. So earth sciences is not only relevant and important in today's society, but it's also very broad science and very multidisciplinary. And there's lots of things you can do with an earth science degree. And as your academic advisor, my job will be to help you find your place in the earth sciences. So why study earth sciences at IUPUI? We, are, we have internationally recognized faculty. Our faculty are doing research all over the world and they are getting grants and awards and being recognized for important work in, in their studies and in their research. And Dr. Macris is gonna talk with you a little bit more about some of the exciting research in our department here in just a bit. Our students are also passionate about making a difference. Our students, when I meet with students for new advising orientation, all of them say the same thing. I want to make a difference. I, I'm, impa I'm passionate about the outdoors. I'm passionate about nature and the environment. And I really want to be out there solving problems. Um, and so you're with a group of like-minded people in that respect. The other great thing about our program um, and something I really love about our program is all the opportunities you will have throughout the program. Um, you will be able to do internships and research projects with our faculty, um, get out and do field work, do lab work, work in lo with local companies and industry. Lots of opportunities are available throughout your degree program. We will get you started, get you experiencing um, field work, lab work, and research from your first semester all the way through your senior year. And I'll talk more about some of those opportunities. On the right side of this image, at the top, you see a group of freshmen. Um, and these freshmen are out collecting seeds at Holiday Park in um, Indianapolis. And they're collecting these seeds to spread somewhere else in the park to continue to grow native species. So that's a project that a freshman, a group of freshmen did. Um, and at the bottom, you see one of our researchers, Dr. Licht um, in Antarctica, all bundled up against the cold and working on a research project there. So let's talk about earth sciences by the numbers. In 2019, 100% of our graduates were able to enter into their destination of choice. And what I mean by that is they were able to get a job. They were, they were accepted to a graduate program or they entered volunteer service work, such as the Peace Corps or AmeriCorps. Um, so 80% of our graduates found employment after, their, um, after they received their degree, 13% continued on to graduate degree programs, and then 7% entered volunteer and service work. So our, our students find jobs and our students find further education and we prepare our students for those jobs, that graduate school, or those experiences that they, they want to get. I am gonna turn things over to Dr. Macris at this time, and she's gonna tell you a little bit about some of the faculty research going on in our department. Kim? Okay, sure. Um, hi, so uh, my name is Cam Macris, and I'm an assistant professor in the Earth Sciences Department. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some of the research that our faculty do. And there's really so much that I could tell you, and it was really hard to choose. So I chose to focus on some of the things that they're doing that involve graduate and undergraduate students so that you can see what kind of opportunities might be available um, as an undergraduate coming into the department. So um, I'm gonna highlight some of our faculty, and I'm gonna start with sort of going from doing research very locally and then move out to doing research further and further away. So that's the, the order that I've chosen. Here is on the left, a, the inset picture is a photo of our profess, uh, a professor named Gabe Filippelli. Um, Gabe works in environmental science, mapping out the distribution of urban contaminants in water, soil, air, and people. So think like lead. Where is lead in the environment? Um, it, where is it in the soil? Is it in the water? Is it in our bodies? And the larger photo on the left shows some undergraduates and a graduate student that are out in uh, the field collecting water samples. And then on the right, same thing. Jenny, you can um, move on to the next slide. Okay, so moving on to our, our second professor we're highlighting. This is Dr. Pierre Hassinth. You can see in the top right 
picture, um, the man, the gentleman holding a uh, what appears to be some kind of rod or white uh, pole is uh, Pierre. And um, he's in the field with some undergraduate students. And this project that you're looking at photos from is where they are um, researching soil and water quality in the Eagle Creek watershed in um, Indianapolis. You may have been there if you are a local. Um, what they're doing is they're looking at linkages between agriculture, so farming, and water quality in the context of climate change. So if we have wetter springs and drier summers, how does that affect um, the water quality near um, a, a site where agriculture is going on? Um, okay, Jenny, you can advance to the next slide. Okay, so next up is Dr. Broxton Bird. We see Broxton in the center photo there. And what I'm highlighting here about his research is um, he has a program that he is a part of called the Multidisciplinary Undergraduate Research Initiative. We call this a MURI. And um, this summer, he is going to be having six students work with him, undergraduate students, to reconstruct ancient flooding episodes on the Missouri River over the last 2000 years using lake sediments collected from Oxbow Lakes. So on the left, you see students out in the field um, taking cores of soil on the uh, bottom of this lake. And then on the very right, you see one of those cores. So this is like if you drilled down with a hollow drill bit and got mud from the bottom of the lake, and then you can see all of the layers and those layers have information about the climate in the past. If you are interested in participating this summer, you can contact Dr. Bird. His email address is on the bottom of the slide there, and he is looking for students who would like to be a part of this uh, research coming up. So if you're going to enroll and you wanna be involved right off the bat, please contact him. Um, so you can you advance, Jenny? Thank you. Next up is Bill Gilhooley. Bill is the bearded person on the far left. Um, and he is in the field there with some students. They are studying lake sediments, again, with the lake cores, to determine how climate change affected human society. So here we're looking at um, the sort of a, a, a marriage of geology and even anthropology. Um, and then the, the photo on the very right is a, is a mass spectrometer, and he uses that to measure isotopes in the different layers of the lake sediment. And then he uses those isotopes to say things about climate change in the past. You can advance, please, Jenny. Okay, so moving on to Li Shin Wang. Um, Li Shin is in the, the leftmost photo in the little inset on the bottom left. And then there are some students, a PhD and an undergraduate student also in that photo. And what they're doing is they're measuring soil moisture inside of what we call fairy circles that are in the Namib Desert in Africa. So the center photo is a, is a um, picture, a photo from above of these so-called fairy circles. And um, this research aims to understand the mystery of how these form. Um, so this is some very exciting research that Dr. Wang is doing, and he has taken undergraduate students to Africa to do this research, which is pretty amazing. Can go on to the next one. Okay, and then moving even further away, we're going to Dr. Kathy Licht, who Jenny already told you goes to Antarctica for her research. She is a very famous Antarctic glaciologist. And this is a quote from Kathy. She says, we time travel back to the last ice age to understand how sensitive Antarctica is to climate changes. We learn about the ice by following a trail of breadcrumbs, which are sand grains, left behind when the ice retreats. Microscopes and lasers are useful tools to characterize the sand grains. So the photos in the middle of your screen are photos of Kathy and graduate students and mountaineers in Antarctica. And then Underneath that is a photo of them getting on a helicopter because that's how you have to get around to some of these parts of Antarctica. On the right is an undergraduate, Connor Watkins, who did some analyzing of the samples that they brought back from Antarctica and actually went to Lamont Doherty Lab in New York for an internship last summer. Next slide, please. 
And then the last one is me. And um, I'm sort of the farthest away because I do experiments where I'm researching the reactions of minerals and rocks to extreme temperatures and pressures, such as what might occur after an asteroid impact on Earth. So the picture, the, the, the image on the upper left shows like what might look like right after a large asteroid impact off of a coastline somewhere. And you can see that it's very hot and uh, there's some maybe melted material. And so what I do is I use um, lasers in the lab to heat materials to extreme temperatures such that they might have experienced after an asteroid impact. And they're actually so hot that they can't touch anything. So they also have to be levitating. So I have a levitation laser furnace that I use to do these kinds of experiments. And I think those are all of our faculty research slides. So thank you for um, listening to me go on. And really that was the tip of the iceberg. So if you wanna find out more, you can go on our website and, um, and email professors um, or go through Jenny. Um, and we'd love to talk to you about what we do. Awesome. Thank you, Cam. And as she said, this is, you got to see some of the really exciting stuff that's happening in our labs. And we could, we could sit here for an hour or more and tell you about everyone and all the cool things they're doing, including our faculty, including our students, our undergrads and our grad students. So as I said before, we will get you as involved as you want to be. And we love to work with our students. One of the great things about our department is we are a smaller department. And the reason that's a great thing is that with our faculty, we have a low student to faculty ratio, um, which means that if you want to get involved, there's a professor that's ready to work with you. And when you get in your upper level courses, you are in a small class with a smaller group of people, meaning you can do lab work. You can start working in our, on our instruments and you can get out in the field because you have that small class size and that one-to-one -one contact with our faculty. So let's talk about our degree options a little bit. In the Department of Earth Sciences, we have four undergrad degree programs. We also have a master's program and a PhD program. And I would be happy to talk with you more about those as well. Um, but we have an environmental science bachelor of science degree. We have a geology bachelor of arts degree, a geology bachelor of science degree, and also a geology bachelor of science masters of science accelerated program okay so you see bachelor of science bachelor of arts bsms lots of lots of acronyms here um i will help you find which degree works best for you um i'll ask you about your future plans maybe you want to go into teaching um, and you want to teach at a high school um, for example i may lead you more towards a geology ba or perhaps you want to get out and you want to work in environmental consulting with the Indiana Department of Environmental Management. I'll lead you to the environmental sciences degree. Um, you want, maybe you wanna go on to grad school and study a very specific part of geology, like working with CAM and working with the levitating uh, furnace and studying impact structures. I'll lead you towards a geology BS or a geology BSMS. And maybe you want to get your bachelor's of science and your master's of science at IUPUI with our faculty. Um, I will lead you to the BSMS program, which is really cool. It's a, it's a five-year program. Um, you spend three years doing undergrad coursework, one year doing both master's research and um, some undergrad and master's coursework, and then one year really focusing on a master's project. Really cool program, gets you, really in, gets you involved with our faculty. So let's go through each of these very briefly. Um, I won't give you all the nitty gritty, these are the classes you're gonna take. Uh, we can do that in a meeting later, but I wanna give you an overview of each of these. So with the environmental science, bachelor of science degree, you will have a general education core of classes. This is common to all students at IUPUI, and it's a set of classes in writing and speaking, arts and humanities, cultural understanding and social sciences. There's lots of choices here. You get to choose courses that help help your degree or that you're interested in. Um, this is a this is a core set of classes that you take along with everyone else at IUPUI. Then you'll have your foundational science coursework, and this is coursework in math, physics, chemistry, biology that is getting you prepared for upper level coursework. And of course, in, intro coursework in environmental science. 
then you'll move into your major coursework. And with the environmental science degree, because environmental science is so interdisciplinary, you will not just take courses in our department, but you'll take courses in other science departments and also other programs on campus. So you will have coursework in the earth sciences. You will have coursework related to sustainability and law and policy. You'll have courses in geography and you may have courses in public health. Once you're partway or halfway through your program, I'm gonna to talk to you about getting a, deciding on a concentration. And a concentration is your last 15 to 18 credits. And this is where you really focus your degree. Um, and we have concentrations in earth and water resources. So studying um, earth processes, water, um, getting a good understanding of earth processes to help solve environmental problems. We have a concentration in remote sensing and GIS. And so this is using satellite data and mapping tools to look at the earth at a large scale, but also to understand problems and try to solve them um, using satellite data and using tools that, are, that we can map surfaces and map and map problems. And then we have the environmental management concentration. And this concentration is more focused on that intersection of environmental science with society. And so you may be looking at things like pollution or um, looking at public health and its relation and, and how the environment impacts our health or climate change and resilience and adaptation. And I'll help you with these. I'll help you decide where do you fit in with these concentrations and which is most interesting to you. And of course, with the environmental science degree and with all of our degrees, you will have research lab and field opportunities throughout your degree program. Our geology degrees, um, they also include the general education core that I always, I already talked about. You will also have foundational science coursework in physics, chemistry, biology, and math. Then your majors courses is where you really start focusing on earth materials and earth processes. So you will take courses in mineralogy or the study of minerals and understand how minerals come together, how they're formed, what their characteristics are. Um, petrology is the study of rocks. So how do those minerals then come together to form rocks and where are rocks formed on earth and what do, what do they tell us about earth and its history? Structural geology will look at how the earth moves. So how do, for example, earthquakes, change the earth's surface and what are the um, relationships between earth or landforms and um, earth materials in relation to those movements. You'll look at earth history, earth, um, you'll look at our 4.6 billion year history and understand how we know about earth's history, but also what are the, what's the fossil record like? What does that tell us about environmental changes on earth? And how can that history help inform us about the future, about future um, changes due to climate change? And then you'll have you'll get choices and lots of electives um, that draw on the strengths of all of our professors. And so you'll be able to choose some courses that are most aligned with your interests and your future goals. And you get research opportunities, lab opportunities, field opportunities. Our geology courses, um, our earth science courses, we get you in the lab, we get you out in the field to see what's happening um, and to feel and look at, look at rocks and look at landforms and um, understand water flow. And so you'll be out there working on these things. So BA, BS, BS, MS, what does it mean? I kind of talked about this a little bit, um, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor's of Science, accelerated degrees. Um, really these are, it's the differences in the classes you're taking. Um, it's the differences in uh, how much science is in your degree program or how much other, say, liberal arts or other courses are in your program. And really, these different degrees, um, I will help you decide which degree works best for you based on your future plans. So let's talk about student opportunities. As a student in our department, and Lori talked with you about some of these in the School of Science and at IEPUI, I keep telling you, you get to do laboratory and field work, so I won't keep talking about that, but you can also get involved in research and working on research projects. Uh, the slides that Cam went through, you saw our students out in the field doing research. Um, we also, being, being in Indianapolis, we have close connections with 
government groups like the DNR, the Indiana Department of Environmental Management, USGS, um, private consulting companies, nonprofits. So we can get we get our students into these internships and getting them working um, and seeing what professional uh, work is like in their field right away. We have our Earth Science Club, which Lori also mentioned, and they get together and have a lot of fun. They also learn, they do a little bit of everything. So in the bottom left, you see a picture of some of our club members from pre-pandemic. So I think this was probably the fall of 19, but they went uh, rock climbing in uh, a local rock climbing place where you can, yeah, I didn't get to go. So sorry, I was, I'm not saying this right, but they, they told me they had a lot of fun just being together. Um, they go hiking together, um, visit state parks. They go to local events like um, rock and mineral shows and professional meetings together. Um, in the picture in the upper right, you see one of our students at our picnic um, when we're able to be together, which will happen again this fall. We're super excited about um, when we're able to be together, we have a picnic. We all get together, we cook some food, we play games, and we have fun. Um, so we work hard, we do research, we work hard in our classes, but we also get together and we have a good time um, and get to know each other and have a community. We also are, we have CEASE housed within our department and CEASE is the Center for Earth and Environmental Science. And CEASE does research um, such as some of Pierre Jacinth's research that Cam talked about earlier, but CEASE also runs service learning projects on campus and around in the immediate surrounding area. And so we can get you involved in doing service learning projects. So going out like that picture I showed you, collecting native seeds and then replanting those. Um, but we can also get you into leadership positions where you're running those service learning projects and you're out there with other undergrads or with um, high school or middle school students and you're teaching them about science of the environment. And then we have scholarships in the School of Science. And I call this an opportunity because this is a way to get you involved and um, help you along with your, with your academics. And so we have scholarships that we offer every year to our students. Um, some of our, our speakers, our student panelists you're gonna talk to later, our scholarship recipients as well. So we like to help you as much as we can um, to reach your goals. I'm gonna turn it back over to Cam and she and I both are going to talk a little bit about community engagement. Thanks, Jenny. Um, yeah, so our a lot of the classes uh, that you would take as an environmental science or a geology major um, offer opportunities to partner with um, the community in various ways. There are really a lot of these kinds of opportunities. And so we're gonna just give you a few examples. And again, if you wanna learn more, just reach out. Um, here, what I'm gonna talk about is Dr. Wong's uh, principles of hydrology class. So this is more of an upper level class. You might take this as a junior or a senior. And here, it, what we see is students that were in this class, I think this must have been in 2019, were partnering with the organization called Reconnecting to Our Waterways. And um, what they're doing here is they're conducting stream monitoring um, and analyzing along the Pogues Run in Marion County, Indiana. So they were doing this in 2018, 2019, and 2020. And their goal is to evaluate the effects of urbanization on stream health and the impacts of vegetation restoration on stream health. And so as part of this class, what you're, you're, you're going to be doing a project where you're actually working with this community partner, this organization, and um, you're getting something from the experience and you're helping them. So you're actually offering them a, a service. This is a true partnership. And um, the goals vary and the partners vary from year to year in this class. Sometimes you work with policymakers in the Indiana Sustainability Institute and actually go to the state house and present findings to policymakers so that they can learn from you. Um, and then there are so many other uh, examples um, but I'll pass it back to Jenny so she can share, share some other ones with you. All right, so let's go back the other way. Maybe we should have switched this up, but Cam told you about a, a junior-senior course. I'm going to talk to you about a freshman course. 
So as soon as you come to IUPUI, you will take a freshman seminar. And a freshman seminar is at its very basic designed to introduce you to campus, introduce you to college life, get you involved in the ways you want to be involved. We're going to take that one step further and we're going, we want to get you involved in the community along with your getting involved at IUPUI. So we have a sustainability themed learning community. We call this a TLC. Um, the, a themed learning community is a set of classes that you take with a small group of other freshmen who are just starting at IUPUI. So the class size is somewhere to, between 18 to 24 students. And you take these three classes together and you also get involved in the community together. And so our themed learning community is a, it's combining your freshman seminar course, your introduction to IUPUI course with a environmental science course and with a sustainability course. And our goal is to think about as a critical thinker, how can I apply sustainable solutions to create th thriving communities and a thriving planet? You will do lots of work in this course um, in the community, but the two main, the two big projects you will work on, one is greening IEPUI proposals. So you and a group of your classmates will make a proposal to help IEPUI become a greener campus. Some examples that, and you'll create this proposal and then you'll submit it to the campus for approval and maybe get some money to do that project. So a couple examples, um, or I'll give you one example that I thought was really cool. A few years ago, our a group of our students proposed to create a green wall in the campus center. So our campus center, when you see it, you'll see that it has these huge glass walls, lots of natural light. And our students um, proposed that they create a wall that has plants that could be used by our campus kitchen, but that could also just provide a green space within and take advantage of this natural light that's in the, in the uh, campus center. So that was approved. They're working hard on that. And um, soon that will come to campus and you'll be able to see that. And you can think back, that was earth sciences. That was our students there creating something really cool. What we'll also, what you'll also do in addition to the greening IEPUI proposal is you will work with a community partner like Cam talked about. And in this freshman TLC, we partner with a community partner called Strive Worldwide. And specifically, we are helping with their project at the U Union Chapel United Methodist Church on the north side of Indianapolis. And this church has a couple acres of land and it's typically been just all grass. And they wanted to create a sustainable landscape there and a community landscape where the community could come and take some hikes or work in the herb, work in a community garden. And so our students actually started this project in the fall of, I believe it was 2017. And we've been working there every fall since. So our students, our earth science students have taken this landscape from just a big grassy area all around the church to creating these elements of sustainability and sustainable landscaping. And so the group you see, these pictures are from a couple different freshman group um, from 2018 and 2019. And what they're doing in the bottom left, we'll kind of go through these quickly. In the bottom left, they're taking out some of the original landscaping and they're, they're replanting uh, native plants into the area. And the next picture over, our students are rolling up sod to create a prairie on, at the front of the property. And so they're creating a, um, they're creating a prairie area all through the front of the property. Um, this is about as far as we got with this project because that's really, really hard work. We decided to bring in like a machinery that does sod rolling, but they had a lot of fun with this. And as an aside, we piled these all up and the kids at the daycare there loved it. It, it became a natural playground. They used it as a natural playground as well. In the upper right, you see tree planting. So they're planting, um, a food forest, so trees that grow food, trees that have a have a purpose in growing food for the community. Um, you see a picture of the community garden um, and some of the cucumber plants there. You see in the bottom right, our students are learning how to build a pavilion, and that pavilion is going to be an outdoor education center on the property. And then in the middle, you see a group of our students presenting at a community dinner at the church. So the church has a community dinner once a month 
and our students went and talked to them about what they've been doing to the landscape and it was really well received and the students got to got to meet some of the community members they were working with we also have professional opportunities so Lori talked with you about preps um, that is for science students and then within our department we also have a yearly career panel where we bring in local and now that we we're all used to zoom some national and international profession professionals to talk with you more about careers in the earth sciences i've already told you we, we get you connect with local professionals and organizations um, we are part of the indiana geologist group who have monthly speakers speaking on a variety of topics not just in geology but also environmental science um, there are some there's the indiana uh, association of environmental professionals that you can be involved with and so we get we get you connections to those people and we also connect you through internships in the area and also nationally um, getting you out in the field or into industries that are working on on problems that you're interested in all right so i want to end with just a sh some quick advice for incoming students so as you come to IUPUI and you attend orientation, you'll meet with me, we'll talk about classes, we'll get you, we'll get you all signed up. But to make that easier, I would I encourage you to transfer all your AP and dual credit prior to orientation. Get that transferred. You'll get emails about how to do that and you'll learn about that um, through your orientation modules. But that helps, that makes it easier when we get together um, so that we can talk about classes. Take your placement tests, take your math and chemistry placement test before orientation. So we're ready to go and choose your classes. And then once you're here, get involved um, and take advantage of the weeks of welcome and all the events that we have for you. All right, that's it for me. Um, if you have any questions, my information is on the screen. Uh, my email is jsumbach at iu.edu or dot at iupui.edu, both will work. There's my phone number. Please reach out to me with any questions. No question is too small, and I'm ready to welcome you. All right, we look forward to seeing you. Thank you, Jenny and Cam. I appreciate uh, your perspective on all of our majors and researches. Uh, I want to open it up to our guests if you have any questions. We've got several questions that have come in, so I will just start asking away at those. But please, as you think of them, uh, keep adding them to the Q&A. Uh, first question is from Carolina, and she asked, what would you recommend to major in uh, for wildlife veterinary career? That's a great question. Thanks for asking. So we do have several students that are interested in um, wildlife biology, wildlife veterinary. Um, I think there's a couple of different paths you can go. Um, you could work in biology, you could do a biology degree um, and combine it with an environmental science minor or a dual major, which is really cool. Um, you can also do an environmental science major and then tailor the experiences that you have towards your career goals. Um, another thing that's really cool that we have at IUPUI is a um, what's called a consortium with other universities locally. And one I'm thinking of specifically is Butler. Um, and Butler University has some wildlife courses and some really focused zoology and um, animal focused courses so we could we could combine those with your environmental science degree to help you reach those goals along with internships and other experiences all right and one attendee asked if i want to be a high school teacher will the geology ba give me the coursework to be able to certify to teach other sciences or only earth sciences assuming i pass all the certification tests another great question Yes, the, the short answer is yes. Um, you will be well prepared to teach some other sciences as well. Um, we have a program here at IUPUI that is a teacher cer certification program. And so what you would do is you would start with your geology degree and you would work through what I would suggest is a bachelor of arts degree with maybe some minors in some of the other sciences that you're interested in. And then you apply to this teaching certification program and spend another year or so getting education courses, getting um, involvement in classrooms, and then you're ready. You're ready to get out there and teach. And so the geology BA would be perfect for that. Okay. And we have a, more of a specific question from Kip, but I'm a transfer with 86 credits and an AS of general studies coming in. Outside of some core courses, would I be jumping right into major coursework? Great question. 
question. And yeah, if you're bringing in some of this extra coursework, what will likely happen is we will, or what will happen is we will match up your coursework to our degree program. And what I'm guessing, and we could work on this one-on-one -on -one together, but what I'm guessing is you would knock out a lot of your gen ed core and some of your science courses, and then we would jump you into the major courses, like you said. And we have some questions that were answered via chat a little bit, but I, I did want to uh, give you a chance to answer those as well. Uh, one student asked, how, can, how soon can I get involved in research like this? And, and Caitlin did give a great answer. She said, uh, basically, as soon as you enroll. But uh, did Jenny or Kim, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that? Sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I agree with uh, what Caitlin said. Caitlin, thank you for answering that. I, you know, as, as soon as you enrolled and and sort of figured out what you were interested in and, and who you might want to work with, you could potentially get started. And um, also, like I um, like I was saying before, when I was talking about Dr. Bird's Murray uh, program, he is actually looking for student researchers this summer, mm -hmm. and um, that's actually a paid position. So students get paid to do this research, and they get. Um, you know, to be involved in, in real research and go out in the field. And uh, so in, in that case, if you talk to him soon, um, you may even be able to start before you got here. <laughs> um, and then I'll give it over back to Jenny. What Caitlin said, what Cam said, absolutely true. And yeah, we, can, we will help you get started as soon as you're ready. So I have had freshmen their very first semester approach one of our faculty and say, hey, can I just work in your lab a little bit to see what it's like? Um, and sometimes those are paid positions. Sometimes they're five hours of volunteering, but really important volunteering um, to see what research is like. And so, yes, we will get you involved as soon as you're ready. And, and um, our professors, our faculty are excited to do that. And we've got some students who are going to be with us here in a minute, but um, one of the questions asked was what minors are common for geology and environmental science students. So Jenny, I wanted to give you a chance to answer that as well. Great. These are all such great questions. So our students often pick up a minor or two or three. And the reason for that, again, is that interdisciplinary nature of earth sciences. They want to have skills in a few other areas. So a few that for environmental science, for example, um, some of our students will do a geochemistry minor in our department, which allows you to focus on geochemical processes and understanding those. Um, some of our environmental science majors will also do a geology minor just to get some more of that, that um, looking at the earth and looking at earth processes experience. Um, our environmental science minors often do sustainable management, or environmental science majors often do sustainable management minors to get an idea of the policy and the nonprofit side of environmental science. Um, and then all of our majors will pick up other sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, based on their interests. Another really important um, skill for environmental scientists and geologists is Geographic Information Systems, or GIS. And IUPUI offers a GIS certificate through our Department of Geography. And so that is something that many students will, will tack on to their degree program so that when they're ready to go to grad school, they're ready to get employment, they have that skill that is really be, being looked for right now. Okay. And I did want to ask Brady and Caitlin to uh, show their screens and uh, get involved in our conversation because I have some questions that'll be more directed at you. Uh, why don't we start out by uh, Brady and Caitlin, uh, if you could just introduce yourself and uh, tell a little bit about yourself and your educational pursuits here at IUPUI, and we'll just go Brady, then Caitlin. Yeah, so my name is Brady Turner. Uh, I'm a junior here at IUPUI. Uh, my major is environmental science. I'm minoring in sustainability, and I'm about to declare a minor in geology. Uh, I live here on campus uh, at uh, Riverwalk Apartments. So that's been a really cool experience. And uh, I've uh, loved every moment that I've spent at IUPUI. Hi, I'm Caitlin. And this is actually my last semester at IUPUI. Um, I majored in geology and I've dabbled in um, a couple other science areas and things like that. Um, I lived on campus the first three years and with everything kind of being online, I just kind of moved back home this last year. But um, 
Uh, yeah, I've loved IUPUI. I actually got an opportunity to intern at the Children's Museum in Indianapolis um, because I want to go into paleontology and paleontology is kind of that really small area. Um, so I got the opportunity being downtown Indy to go and um, intern at their paleo lab there. So that was really fun. I wanted to start out just by asking, um, when you what what is the decision that made you decide to come to IUPUI, and really why have you decided to stay at IUPUI? Um, I'll answer first. Um, I think one of my biggest decisions was just that it happened to be close to home, and um, upon you know I did my first college tour there, and then I did one specifically after I had. Um, I think I had already enrolled by that point and I had, I did the tour like within the um, science building. And um, I just, I really kind of fell in love with the environment there. Everybody was super nice and helpful. And um, even though paleontology is such a small and kind of rare thing to find, I guess, um, everybody jumped on board and wanted to help me kind of find my way even without there necessarily being a vertebrate paleontology program per se at IUPUI. So, um, and that has carried on all four years. Jenny especially has been extremely helpful. She sent out the email um, that got me interested in the internship that I did at the Children's Museum. Um, and uh, notably Dr. Licht, Kathy Licht, um, she has kind of been my mentor about grad school and stuff like that. Um, I've talked with her extensively about different grad programs, like how to get into grad school and um, things along those lines. And every professor that I've had has been really great with just helping me along. And everybody wants to explain things when you don't get it. And um, yeah, everybody's just super helpful. And that's, I think, the best thing that I've experienced at IEPY. And for me, uh, throughout most of high school, I knew that I wanted to go into environmental science. That was just something, you know, a lot of students, they're not sure maybe going in their freshman year, and that's totally fine because there's so many uh, great programs and there's people like Jenny who are going to help you find what works for you. Uh, but for me, I knew immediately that I wanted to do environmental science. And I had a friend who went to IUPUI who she's actually graduating this semester with a a uh, degree in uh, grade school teaching. And she told me that IUPUI was awesome. You know, it's a really great campus. It's a great location. So I, I was originally from Southern Indiana. So I came up and checked it out. And I loved the campus. Uh, I loved the housing options. And I loved the kind of programs that they had in place. So that kind of sold me for it immediately. And uh, right from the get go, uh, it seems like the IUPUI faculty are very focused on the individual, like they're very willing to actually put in time to help individual students to get to know you and to build those relationships, like to the point where maybe you don't even realize it. Like I've had instances where I, maybe it's a class I had my freshman or sophomore year when, where then two years later, the professor will like be walking by me and he'll, he or she will say hello to me. Like it's that much of a uh, connection where they develop that with you. So that's something really cool that uh, I've been lucky to have here at IUPUI. One of my favorite parts of uh, of the whole earth sciences department is I know that you guys have a room that for, for your students uh, where they can go and congregate and get to know each other. Um, and Caitlin and Brady, have you um, had any experience with that? And can you talk about what that is? Yeah, um, I used to go down there with one of my friends and we would just hang out in between classes if we had gaps and stuff and do homework and whatever um but it's called the map room and basically we just go there and hang out there's a big whiteboard in there where um there's always like events or things that are going on not only in our sciences but if there's something going on like downtown indy um they'll write it up there and um it's just a, it's a really good place to go to your peers if you're having trouble with something too um and just talk things out and um, like if you can't talk with your professor at the moment, or if you're studying for a test right before class, whatever it might be, it's a really good room to just go hang out with like-minded people who are in your degree field. And um, not only for academia, like I said, people just go in there and you can hang out and talk to your friends. And some people go in there and take naps between classes too. So um, yeah, it's just a really nice little area for us. 
Yeah, and from my experience there, uh, I first went when a uh, fellow classmate in Calcfer, Calcfer Tech 2, uh, she wanted some help studying. So she told me about, like, uh, she said, like, she liked to study in the map room. So I went with her. That was the first time I actually went. And so we studied there several times. And from there, that was actually where I first learned about the uh, Earth Science Club, or rather where I first got to meet people in the Earth Science Club. And uh, one of my friends, Marissa, is now the president of that club. So that's that was kind of my in. And now I'm uh, a part of that club, even though we haven't been able to be super active uh, this past few semesters because of the pandemic. It's still been a really great experience. And the room itself is on the smaller side, but somehow that makes it very cozy. Like it's called the map room because there's a lot of maps uh, everywhere and there's uh, comfortable furniture. There's a nice big table in the middle. Uh, and it's, it's a really cool environment to just be able to kind of hang out with other people uh, in the same major or like-minded major as you. Yeah, and it really does speak uh, to the close-knit um, relationships that the students within your department have with each other. Uh, now, Brady, I know that you've um, done some research and field study through, um, through your classes and through your learning community. Uh, can you maybe talk a lot about uh, what you did uh, through your freshman theme learning community and then again uh, with your uh, Earth Materials course? Yeah, so for Strive Worldwide, uh, I was part of kind of the uh seasonal planning part of that year like so we each had a different project some of us were focused on they were talking about a native fruit garden uh they were talking about we we mentioned the installation of the the natural uh grassland like for the to kind of have a pathway through it and whatnot and i did help with sod removal that was a uh, a fun venture um, you know, just I just put in headphones and it was just like three hours of digging up sod. It was it was actually kind of fun if, if you enjoyed that kind of kind of work. But uh, my particular project that I worked with, uh, I believe three other classmates with was we built a basically a seasonal management plan for the overall property. So basically the idea is that the groundskeeper could come on and not have to worry about researching oh, what do, what do these grasses need done to them? How often do I water the fruit trees? All that kind of stuff. We could just build a plan for them to follow to kind of make it a more stress-free transition for them as all these new things came onto the property. Uh, and for my earth materials course, uh, just the course in general is like a super in-depth look at just kind of minerals and how they kind of interact with everyday life. And so one thing we did is we actually went to uh, Military Park, which is just off campus, and we actually took uh, lead soil samples. So it's, it's this crazy thing, you know, like there's lead everywhere, uh, not necessarily in harmful amounts, but uh, so it was this really cool thing to just be able to dig up a little bit of dirt, you know, at the edge of a road and be able to determine how does that differ from dirt six feet into the road, you know, to see these lead differences from uh, things like diesel exhaust and whatnot. Like it's, it's really cool to be able to learn uh, kind of the processes of not just pollution, but the processes by which um, pollutants or other minerals uh, reach locations and then spread from those locations. Like that's been something that has been like super eye-opening as an environmental science major. Thank you. And we've talked a lot about obviously about the academics involved, but obviously, you know, a college experience is a lot more than that. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the things you've done at IUPUI outside of uh, academics? One thing that just immediately popped into my brain was um, there's a lot of, um, it almost feels like little parties that um, different organizations will hold in the campus center. Um, and for the life of me, I can't remember what one in particular I'm thinking about, but my roommate and I went there one time, I think it was for like a JAG days, like, we, like for a JAG week or something like that. Um, and we went over there and they had like, um, basically a Build-A-Bear for like little Jaguars. And so you could get your own like little stuffed Jaguar and there was all kinds of food and um, they even have like games and stuff um, and like all sorts of different things that you can do in there. And that stuff is just kind of a fun little getaway from like school. Um, I also remember they did like um, basically movies um, in the courtyard between Taylor Hall and the tower. 
and also like right next to the campus center basically um and my friend my roommate slash friend <laughs> and I would go and watch the movies um they did the they played the new Aladdin movie there and I particularly remember going to that one um so yeah outside of academics there is definitely a lot of other things to go and do as well on camp not only on campus but also off campus because you know we're downtown Indy um but I definitely feel like IUPUI makes a great effort to give the students other things to do that's not just you know sit around and study and go to your classes and stuff like that so yeah uh I, th I think that's that's very well said there's just so many things to do both as part of the school and kind of just in your own free time uh I'm actually the president of Students Against Animal Cruelty at IUPUI and of course, the pandemic has kind of limited the activities that we're doing, but two things that we're thinking about doing, uh, maybe just in our free time, kind of just some of us club members, is we're actually going to be traveling to uh, Topper Holler Sanctuary, which is a nature sanctuary and uh, uh, animal sanctuary in Northern Kentucky, and we're just gonna be volunteering for the day. Uh, we're also thinking about planning a hike, so that's another really cool thing. There's uh, Eagle Creek, uh, isn't all that far from campus, you know, it's 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 a under 30 minute drive. And then we also have, uh, I believe it's Fort Harrison State Park, which is another awesome place to to go that I go to probably every few weeks, uh, just because it's it's just so beautiful. And it's nice to kind of get away from the city every now and then. Uh, on campus movies are another fun thing that, you know, uh, there's there's kind of the bigger showings, but then also clubs will do showings. You know, so maybe it's something specific to an interest of yours that you can watch. There's a lot of events like that that are kind of specific, like you can see guest speakers, whether it's something for your major or whether it's just some other thing that you're interested in. It's really cool being able to hear all these different uh, uh, perspectives on issues and, and experiences in our world. Um, and also kind of just outside of the IUPUI sphere, uh, Indiana has a pretty good like uh, I guess you could call it like an indie slash DIY music scene. Um, it, it might be evident, but I'm involved in like the local uh, punk rock and hardcore scene. And so uh, the pandemic obviously has put a damper on that, but it's it, there's concerts like every weekend, uh, sometimes multiple concerts. So if that's something you're into, you can have a lot of fun with that. And we did have a question that came through the chat that I wanted to give Jenny a chance to answer too. Uh, so one of our attendees is interested in becoming a park ranger at a national park. I wanted to know uh, how would what would be the best course for them uh, within our department? Yeah, they're right. We get we get lots of majors that are interested in those kinds of experiences at the state parks and the national park level. Um, being a geologist or a park ranger is a great way to educate others about earth processes and about environmental processes. Um, so to get involved, um, it's kind of like uh, what Caitlin was talking about with paleontology. You got to get started right away and get your foot in the door um, for those types of positions. And so what we would do is um, we would really focus your coursework on understanding earth processes or environmental processes. We'd probably get you involved in some courses in public speaking and outreach um, and also in maybe even something crazy like museum studies just to learn how to talk about science to the public. And then Professionally, there's some really cool opportunities with um, the US, well, it, with the Geological Society of America and also AmeriCorps, where we can get you in, where you can get yourself into uh, summer programs working with geoscientists in national parks, um, working at local parks, whether it's as simple as, hey, I'm helping with trail ma maintenance or as involved as, hey, I'm going in the back country with a geologist and taking samples for studies. Um, and we've had students do both of those things and all of those things. So yeah, I think this is a good, this is a good degree path for that. And we, again, we would design your experiences and help you reach those goals through those experiences. Thank you. And I did wanna thank everybody for coming today. We were running out of time, but uh, thank you to Dr. Macris and, uh, and Jenny and Caitlin and Brady for your uh, perspective on, uh, on IUPUI and our program. I wanted to thank our guests for coming as well. Uh, you know, as you heard a lot today is, you know, that our location and research is a reason that a lot of people come to IUPUI, but it's definitely our people that keep people around. And, and I think we had some great examples here today. 
So I did want to invite you to come and visit. We do do student led tours uh, every week. And that is really the best way to see if this campus is for you is to visit and see where you'll be studying. And if you um, have any questions going forward or would like to schedule anything, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can just email me at science at iupui.edu. Uh, just want to wish everybody a great day and hope to see you on campus soon.